filthy when I found you. Dressed like a slut. But daddy's gonna keep you clean. He shot. The Shy, episode five. Best episode so far this season. It picked up steam pretty heavy in this episode. And this is gonna be my top five WTF moments reviewed from episode five. And let me just say this about my girl Candy because she ain't make my list. If that was the damn love scene that we heard all this hype about, Candy, that love scene won't worth two cents in the year 1990. Homeboy was eating the Vienna sausage, and then in under 39 seconds, he was nutting, stretching and screaming like he was Igor from Ghostbusters 2. So you can miss me with that one, Candy. And Todd, I hope that's not the love scene you claim you was mad about. So we obviously know Candy ain't a fan of Lena Waite's character because she wanted black people to still be upset with the LGBT community. And having said that, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive on into it. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Follow me and the fellas Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. Fridays, we have special guests on the show. And if you are a budding YouTuber who likes to do reviews, or you just some random subscriber who has a hot take and you want to join us Friday night, hit me up on my Instagram. Let's dive into it. My number five WTF moment. Jada is back, and she is back with her man Tomas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, every person that i ever known whose name was Tomas, I've never been able to trust him, and neither should you. You guys remember Tomas from Power? There was a Tomas on Martin. There was a Tomas in Miami Vice, and they want none of them worth three cents. And in this episode, Jada and Tomas, literally in one date, Miss one episode and damn near about to get proposed to each other. She meeting the family already. But what made that meetup pretty weird was Tomas left Jada alone with the mother and the brother. They ask her, can she speak Spanish? She says no. And then they immediately go to speak in Spanish. That is disrespectful to people who can speak a different language. And you're somewhere where people can only speak one language. That is disrespectful. I'm happy Jada had the patience to just let that go. And then as they further get into the story, we learned that Tomas had a wife who was a doctor that died. And apparently the family really, really loved that woman. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a backstory with Tomas. I don't know what it is, but I'm not liking the way it's going. They're trying to make him seem like he's Rico Suave and the weirdness of his family the doctor lady dying and they still seem to love her tells me maybe there's some immigration issues. Maybe he needs to remarry to help the family get into America. Maybe they need to hide money. I don't know what it is, but ladies and gentlemen, keep your eye on that situation. And as they're talking at the very end, he basically says, in order to deal with my family, you need to have thick skin. And Jada should have been like, hell to the no. Respect is given when you give respect. And I don't know your family, and so they should have treated me with a little bit more respect, a modicum of respect that they didn't give her. And we'll follow that story, but ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on Rico Suave and his family. Don't trust him. The number four WTF moment, Emmett gets caught by Sonny running his restaurant at night. And did we all not know that Sonny, who is an old school guy, kind of like Vernon Gaines on a different world, he knew what was going on because y'all know old school heads, they be checking them light bills. <laughs> they would rather run the fan than run the AC because they worry about that light bill. And you don't think that within a week he's noticed something's going on. So he already knew. But in this episode, you could kind of see it coming. The power's going out. Emmett's having a damn house party outside and in the restaurant. Come on, Emmett. You asking to get caught. And the thing that's kind of messed up about this situation is Sonny basically made Emmett a general manager. He put a lot of trust in Emmett. He's seen something special in Emmett. What I don't understand is Emmett, why did you not just say, Sonny, can I do this and cut you some of the bread? You know, you had to split the money up three ways, but it'd be a good way to maybe even let Sonny get to the point where he might want you to have your own shift. Or a better question, Emmett, why don't you just get a food truck? 
the way Brandon did. Why don't you just somehow or another, you know, get your girl to invest her drug money into you, you get a food truck, and y'all run the city. We'll keep an eye on this. I don't think Emmett is going to give up the business. And the next question is going to be, what is Lala going to do after getting her feelings hurt in this situation? Because she, we know she wants to become up in business. My number three WTF moment, Trig's girlfriend, Imani, we find out her backstory. And she has a couple of skeletons in the closet. She killed her dad. And she basically killed her dad because one day when she was dressed in drag, he gets on top of her, chokes her, has a knife, and is just frustrated that he wanted a, um, a more masculine son. And the son that he has wants to be a woman, and he wasn't feeling that. So he was going to try to hurt her, and she wound up killing him. And she's worried that because of her past, Trig is not going to be able to get Jake to come stay with them in the house. Um, they're not married, so on any given point, she can just say that, that we're not living together. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And, you know, people change. Um, I don't think that you should hold something against her from that far in the past as something to say that she can't be someone better, especially if her life was under threat by her dad. So, but they had some other issues when the DSS came out to see their home. They've got electrical sockets messed up. She's running an illegal hair business, don't have a permit. So I don't see her leaving the situation, but the question that you got to ask yourself is, if push comes to shove, will Trig kick Imani to the curb for Jake? That last scene when Jake runs up in the crib because of what Duda did, and Trig just went to a corner and was holding Jake, and Imani was sitting there looking by herself, it eludes to something like that coming. Maybe Trig won't make, make give an ultimatum, but possibly Imani might just leave a note and dip. Leave me your comments on what you think about that. Number two WTF moment. Jake finally realizes that Duda is not what he seems. Duda beats up a guy who was spray painting on his campaign signs. The guy uttered this, no hero Washington. And that triggered something in Duda to basically beat the brother up grab him by his clean teeth, throw him to the ground, and he was soul stomping this brother. He was stomping him like he was standing there, was trying to stomp him all the way to hell. And Jake was standing there looking in the background like, what in the elf am I dealing with? Who am I living with? And it just begs the question, is this going to cause Jake to want to leave Duda even quicker? Because I think Candy got in Duda's head and is trying to get Duda to involve Jake a little more in the campaign so that he can win. At first he was like, nah, but during the scene where he was playing the record, it seems like there might have been a moment of clarity for him where he might be like, you know what, maybe I should use Jake to help with the campaign because optics count in campaigns. You see a married couple with a kid and you start thinking, integrity. You start thinking trustworthiness. You start thinking honesty and maybe he might be trying to do that but at this point Duda doesn't see I mean Jake doesn't see that behavior. He might be like hell to the no. I'm not going to be dealing with you. I'd rather deal with Trig and this is probably when we're going to start seeing the conflict happen between Trig and Duda but we only got like five episodes left so they're going to have to pick up the pace if we're going to get all that to happen. You guys already know what was going to be my number one WTF. My girl, Keisha, that brown chocolate has been found. And ladies and gentlemen, me and most of my subscribers have been complaining. Why have they not had the police go and investigate the bus driver and the high school coach? They opened this episode up where you see an empty house like she trapped in R. Kelly's closet. And then you hear someone saying, I got to keep my baby washed up because, you know, you was wearing that filthy whore outfit, blah, blah, blah. And we see Keisha being bathed. And I mean, ladies and gentlemen, they made this whole scene dealing with Keisha extremely eerie, extremely gripping. Um, you could feel the pain. It made you feel sad. Um, if Lena Waif was going for a home run or making you feel like, individuals are stealing girls and look at the dastardly deeds they're doing to them she hit it home on this one 
And throughout that whole episode, you see that the guy has cameras set up where he can voice into her and the cameras move with her every movement. You also notice that there's handcuffs on the bed and you also notice that for some reason, a lot of high school trophies, high school track outfits are in this trapped in the closet situation Keisha's in, which I think is just highlighting more that this could be the coach or are they trying to throw us off? You know, these shows are good for doing that. And I tried to close up on whoever this individual is and I tried to brighten it up, but I just couldn't get it bright enough to see a face. And I guess I got to give a kudos to the cinematography of the shy for not allowing people like me who know how to come in here and manipulate photos to be able to see who this brother is. But during the same sequence with Keisha, she's able to get out when the power goes out. So we not only we not only see that she is not she's alive, but we also learn where she's located. And this is what they said on the news. Breaking news update. We still don't have any information on the power blackout. We can only tell you that it is only affecting the south side from the Stevenson and below. It's not affecting downtown and northern areas. So Keisha is somewhere within the south side among those streets. And as our man Ronnie is walking on the street, Keisha busts out of the house and thinking she's going to get away, she gets apprehended by homeboy and she starts screaming. This was directly from the trailer last week. And Ronnie hears the voice and that voice is Keisha, ladies and gentlemen. So as of right now, Keisha is still alive. She's apprehended by, I'm going to say that is that track coach that got beat up by Jake's brother. And Ronnie is somewhere close by and we know the vicinity that Keisha's in. So maybe Ronnie will get the crew back together. He'll go over there and get Dre and they'll start doing a neighborhood search and we'll figure this thing out. I'm hoping they let Keisha out at least by episode eight so we can do some reconnaissance and that hopefully we can get track coach beat the hell up. Ladies and gentlemen, leave me all your comments. Let me know how you felt about this particular episode. For me, this was the best episode of this season. We got to see Keisha, but we didn't get to see her in a light that I wanted her to be presented in. I feel so bad for her because they are really portraying that scene as something that is just dastardly. And Candy, miss me with that love scene crap. If that's the one that you were talking about, Todd, you shouldn't even have got mad about that because I mean that clearly was acting. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Follow me on the gram. Leave me all your updates about the Shy, Power, P Valley, High Town, movies, stocks, bonds, all the stuff that we do on my channel. And be sure to follow me, Larry, and T Streams Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. And until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.